Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome. This is Dominic Sicali, Mafia Roundtable. Glad to see everybody back. Hope you like this story. This story was basically when I decided to finally become a government informant, as everybody would say, a rat, and cooperate with the government. The day I left MDC Brooklyn, which is a metropolitan correction facility where they house pre-trial inmates, inmates that aren't convicted, awaiting to go to trial, and also inmates that are convicted. It's just like a reception center, holding center. The day I had to leave, that was the hardest decision I made in my life. I Over that year I was there, I got very close with Quiet Dom, the boss of the acting boss of the Genovese crime family. And I was also accused of killing his son, for those of you who don't know that. Uh, that will come out in a later podcast, what happened there. But the day I left that facility, uh, it was difficult. It was really difficult. The government placed me in a county jail <clears throat> in New York, upstate New York. Small county jail had two sides. Uh, I think there was about maybe total 120 inmates, 60 on each side of the units. When I got there, I basically kept to myself, didn't mess with any people, and come to find out uh, on each side there might have been 15 to 20 federal inmates all cooperating, different levels of cooperation. So basically, it was a rat center for cooperators, you know, for the federal government. And then you had the state inmates coming in, who was for drunk driving, weekend passes, they could go out. So they didn't know. The government put me under a different name. Anytime I was in the newspaper, they would actually try to pull the papers so the population didn't see that I was that, actually that person, uh, Dominic Sicali. And uh, that's how we got by. Uh, this one day, actually, another guy who was there was Pete Zaccaro, known as Petey Bud. He was an associate, uh, I think, with the Gambino crime family. He was over there. He recognized me. I saw me a few times in Howard Beach when I meet up with Bruno, and Vinny would be with me. Also, there was another young kid, man, strong kid, his name was uh, Chucky, we called him, Jason Hernandez. He used to bang around with Fat Joe, Cuba Lynx, tough kid, dangerous too. So we built a relationship because we're from the Bronx, we're together. So we had a pack, God forbid anything happens to one of us with these state inmates, you know, we'll, we'll get each other's back. Not that we're looking for trouble, but when you have a tag on you that you're a cooperator or a rat, you know, it's a dangerous situation, especially state inmates coming in. So I minded my own business. Even the cops knew. I, I didn't say much to people. This one day, we get a guy in. He's part of the New York State prison gangs. I, I, this is the first time I was hearing of it when he came in. The fellow cooperators told me, be careful. He's part of, they call them rat hunters in the state prison where if you're in a state facility they find out you cooperate in any way shape or form they'll try to take you out quick they're known for that at the time i'm maybe about 230 240 in shape this guy i had to be about the same weight maybe a little heavier he was a big big guy spanish the cops didn't like him because he was in, come to find out, he was in, he threw bleach on his girlfriend's face, right, in his girlfriend's face. So he's in for bullshit charges. This one day I'm watching TV, and, you know, he's walking around, he's mean mugging everybody, because he's one of these tough guys, has to portray it. And he's walking by me, there's about four or five of us, and he's going like this. Meaning, he's slicing us. It's going to slice us. Then he passed the comment, I'm going to cut one of these motherfuckers' heads off. So it gets back to me, Don, be careful. While you were sitting on the TV, he went by you. Did they? I said, oh, he did? Okay. They lock us in. 
we would lock them maybe every four or five hours and then they pop us out at nighttime you lock down so I was told this in the morning by afternoon we would then we got locked in after I was told this afternoon the doors pop so now I'm watching as I'm walking I'm passing by the pool table he's like looking at me looking at me so now I'm, I turn around you have a fucking problem yeah you're my problem we go back and forth with some words. So right away, as he's arguing, I'm right by the pool table. I grab a pool ball. So <laughs> he didn't even notice it. And then I, I feel my blood, my pressure, everything's building up. And I'm trying to hold back because I know, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm capable of doing. It's not going to look good either. So with that, I take the pool ball and I just chuck it out of my hand on the pool table. Oh, and then he starts with the mount. You, you gonna hit me with a pool ball? I said, you know what? You're not even worth it. You're just a punk. And I'm walking away. He's wrapping his mouth some more, some more, some more. And we had some open cells. Finally, I couldn't take any more. I'm like, you know what? Let's grab that open cell in the back. Let's go. He's walking with me in the back. Now, where the back cell was located, there's the staircase. No, I'm sorry. The staircase is going like this. So the officer's station is on the other side. So basically the staircase, he can't see behind the staircase. So now we're over there. I go, I see the door was shut. Somebody shut the, op the open cell. Usually they stay open. So if somebody has to urinate, they could go do it in a free cell because nobody lives there. Somebody locked the door. So now we can't go. So now we're under the stairs, and he's going back and forth with me. We're, down, we're verbally going back and forth. And I'm refraining so much, so much. Finally, it got to the point, I, and I'm thinking, I'm just cooperating. I don't want to get in trouble. It's not going to look good. So when I'm talking to him, I'm just, I'm standing like this, and I mean... My adrenaline levels were off the chart. I'm, I feel the heat on my body. I'm sweating. And as I put out my hands, I said, look, pal. And I've always kept distance with people because I know I'm not getting sucker punched. So I have my hands out and I'm like, I don't want any beef. And I'm shaking. I'm like this. And I'm like, I see it and I feel it. And I'm like thinking to myself, what the fuck? And then come to realize it was just all the adrenaline, the pent up. I've never felt like that before. Finally, he said, look at you. You're scared. You're shaking. So I said, you're right. And I just turned around and I started walking away. He starts walking towards me. And I'm watching him and my peripheral vision. He starts walking towards me and I see his hand go in. As his hand goes in, he says, yeah, you're afraid. I take a step forward. And I backstab, crack him, hit him with an overhand, hook. As he's now, he goes back, he's going to the side, dropping, I hit him with an uppercut. He goes into the door. Now, there was all steel open grates, little square boxes on the door. He grabs onto it. He has one hand in his pants, and he grabs onto it. I go right at him, and I'm hitting him. Uppercuts. By this time... I see he takes his hand out, and he, there's nothing in it, but he puts his hand on the grate. So he's holding on both grates. I'm hitting him with overhands, uppercuts, hooks, just going to work. My main man Chucky comes down, and then does, he's standing there ready. He has his shower shoes on, but he's ready to go. Pizza Caro, Petey Bud, nowhere to be found. This motherfucker, I, I couldn't even find him afterwards when they got off. But I noticed Jason's on the side. So as I'm, I mean, I'm hitting him with haymakers. I feel no pain. No pain. By this time, his head's buried, his hands, and I see he's, he's shaking now. He's bucking back and forth, like going into convulsions. And I'm just going off. It felt like I was there 10, 10 minutes hitting him. But in all actuality, it was probably about 60 seconds, maybe a minute and a half. By this time, all the cops came in. Not one of them went to put their hands on me. They surrounded me. 
Dom, Dom, relax, stop, stop. They're yelling, Chucky, Dom, Dom, Dom. And he know, you know, I, that's a familiar face. Back up. So I back up. I have my hands up. And I put my hands up to the cops. When you motherfuckers touch me, it's on. No, 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 we're not going to touch you. And I'm not going to the shoe. You can lock me in my cell. So I had a single cell. You're locking me in my cell. I'm not going to segregation. You think you're putting me in segregation, there's going to be a problem. No, 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 no. We don't want no problem. Go in the cell. I mean, I was just fired up. They saw it. I go to the cell. There, this kid's stumbling, blood all over the place. I mean, the floors, everything. Walls are covered with his blood. He's walking, they're walking him out. Doctor, all of a sudden, the cop says they had to take him out in an ambulance. Um, I look at, doctor comes and checks me out. My hands, I'm like the elephant man. My hands are so swole, I can't even close them. And I felt no pain. No pain at all. Once the adrenaline wore off, oh my Lord. I was so, I was hurting bad, my hands. But come to find out, all stitches. He had like 12, 15 stitches in his head. I busted him up bad. He was in the hospital for a day or two. Then came back, they kept him in shoe. Now, lo and behold, of course, they call my prosecutor, the FBI agents. They come and see me. Greg Andres comes in. Fuming, fuming. Are you fucking out of your mind? Do you want your agreement ripped up? With all the violence you have in your record, all the attempted murders in your record, are you fucking crazy? You put somebody in the hospital? I tried, you know, I'm like, Greg, I walked away. The fuck? The guy reached in his pocket. He came at me. I tried avoiding it. And, you know, I, I defended myself. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Let him stab you. Do you realize you're supposed to be testifying in these cases? Do you realize you're going to go for sentencing one day? We can't guarantee your sentence. It's up to the judge. We're going to speak on your behalf on the extent of your cooperation, what you did, your assistance, all the people you helped put away, how you changed your life. How am I supposed to explain that and you fucking put somebody in a hospital? The judge is going to look at you like you didn't change. Come on, smarten up, and you could get your agreement torn up for this. Thank God, because nobody liked this guy, and it was self-defense because I was walking away, so one of the cops and all the other inmates did state that, even though we did have verbal altercation, that I was walking away. And the guy did reach in his pants for something. They didn't charge me with a charge. And I told them, I said, you know what? I agree. You're right, Greg. I agree a thousand percent. But this is on you guys. This is your fault. So he looked at me. What are you talking about? You know the statute. You know the caliber of cooperator I am. You know I'm splattered all over the fucking newspapers. It's out there. Because this was like the next John Gotti, Vinny. And I'm the next Sammy the Bull, basically, for Vinny. And here, you put me in a county jail? At least monitor who's coming in on our side. You have a prison gang member who's known for going after rats in my unit? Come on. This ain't all my fault here. So he still got into me. I was wrong. He said, please, please. Don't ever do this again. I don't want to have to rip up your agreement. No matter how much any of us like you, we will rip your agreement up. And he was serious. Greg was a no-nonsense guy. He was fair. To him, it was never personal. It was all business. And with that, eventually they moved me over to MCC New York, which is also like MDC Brooklyn, a metropolitan holding facility. But over there, they have a WITSAC unit where witness protection people of my caliber go, or so I thought. While in that unit, all of a sudden it comes out, Vinny's hit list. So right away the government comes and sees me. And it's in all the newspapers. Vinny gave somebody a hit list. Uh, a guy, I guess, set him up, gave it to the authorities. There was five names on the hit list. Judge Garifus, Greg Andres, Dominic Sicali. James Taglioni, that's Big Lou, and the attorney, Tommy Lee. All on the hit list. 
So they're asking me about it because now they're looking to charge Vinny with even more charges. Attempted murder on a federal judge. Not only supposedly Vinny with, with Greg Andres, but now a federal judge. As soon as they asked me, I told them, absolutely not. I believe it was a voodoo list. I know Vinny. He would never give somebody a list to kill. Never. Never, never, never. Might be stupid enough to say it out loud like he did with me. But he'd never give a list. That's not Vinny's caliber. Vinny would never do that. Voodoo, yes. Vinny used to go to mediums on the street. And one in particular, she told him, it was about maybe six months before Vinny got arrested. Vinny, be aware. Somebody's around you is going to cooperate. He's a big guy. And this is true. His name starts with a J. But I don't know. Be careful. So right away when Vinny came out, he told me, I had around me a guy, Big Jimmy McManus, who's around the Columbos. And there'll be more stories with him as well. Very close with him. So right away Vinny said, Dom, be careful. The medium just told me somebody's going to flip. And he's a J. I can't think of any. He's a big guy. I couldn't think of anybody but Jimmy. I said, all right, Vinny. I doubt Jimmy's going to cooperate. Jimmy did time. I know him. He's, he's, he's a gangster. He's a thug, Irish thug. So with that, I still have my antennas up. But lo and behold, who is the big guy? Joe Messina. So she was right. So Vinny did believe in that. The Santeria, voodoo, whatever it may be. So I told the government it was that. Now, lo and behold, in this witness protection unit, they have inmates there who are jailhouse rats. What they do is try to set people up in population to get them to talk, maybe fabricate a story, or, hey, I got this drugs. You want to buy drugs with my connections on the street, hook somebody up? Then they wear a wire and they set them up. And they build a case, they get the time shaving off. So now... All of a sudden, there's guys in there that caliber. And my name is Dominic Sicali. I am straightforward. I don't pull any punches with anybody. When I was in that unit, people, one of the guys that taking food from our food tray, selling it, and I told them, motherfucker, leave my food. My food better be all there. This is my rations. If I want to give it out, it's my choice. Don't be taken. No, no, Dominic, I don't want to hear it's not like that. Other people, when you're working out, they try hogging up things and no, this is our slot, your slot. This is nobody's slot. You don't own this. I don't want to hear it. So I was direct with people. So it's either you love me or you hate me. Over there, the majority hated me. So come to find out after this hit list, it's in all the papers. I tell the government this never happened. Vinny would never do that. Do you feel threatened? No, I don't feel threatened because Vinny's not going to do anything. It's a voodoo list. If anything, I, I'll be worried about Santeria or whatever voodoo cult he brings it to. So I debunked that right off the bat. I could have easily said, oh, yeah, I'm afraid of Vinny. Oh, it's a hit list. It's this, it's that. Jump on the bandwagon. Tell them what they wanted to hear as opposed to the truth. Later on down the road, I get questioned. Dom, did you say this and that make up a story that Vinny's looking to kill you with a cop and this? Are you out of your fucking mind? Like, where's this coming from? Lo and behold, as the investigation goes on years later, they did, the government did whatever investigation they had to check everything. And my defense to the government when I sat down with them, so now they're looking at me like, we're going to rip your agreement up. I'm like, for what? What did I do? Well, supposedly you concocted a story that Vinny's looking to kill you, tell this guy to say this and that guy to say that. I'm like, are you guys out of your fucking mind? Why would I need somebody else to, to make up a story when I could have just told you when you came in to me about this list? Why do I need somebody else? I would have said, I'm afraid of my life. I fear Vinny. He's in the building. Oh, my God, he's going to kill me. I'm on the list. I would have told you that. What you're saying makes no sense. With that, come to find out, jailhouse rat. That's, that's trying to, with my coattails, 
jumped on the bandwagon. They didn't know what the hell I told the government. They probably figured, oh, I said yes to the list, so let's make this up since Dominic's in the same building. And then I'm like, I'm just shaking my head. So when the government came in again, I threw back at them. You put me in a, a unit, w- witness protection unit, with jailhouse rats. We're trying to get the time reductions by setting people up. And they'll do anything. So really, I'm going to tell a stranger this, somebody I don't know, somebody I know is a jailhouse rat. If, if you think I'm that stupid, then rip my agreement up. What can I tell you at this point? Do your investigation, whatever it is. And then for months, trust me, I was nervous as fuck because it's nerve-wracking. First off, I didn't like cooperating. I cooperated. And then all this, knowing this, something you didn't do. And in the past, I did 10 years for a crime I didn't commit. I was set up by DEA back in the day. And that's another story that they even told me, we won't even arrest you, just work with us. I told them, I'm not a fucking rat. I'll beat this case all day long. And these motherfuckers set me up. Two-hour trial. And again, that's a great story for here. So if you like this story, you want to hear many more, please hit the subscribe button. Um, keep the comments coming in. I'll try my best to continue to answer them and answer every single one as I see them coming because it lets me get a feel of you people, the viewers, the audience, what you want to hear. And I'll keep on changing up my format. I listen to the viewers. We're coming out with more rap music. We're going to continue to come out with it. I'm having a blast doing it. It helps me release, makes people laugh. I love it. I love it. As long as I make somebody's day, that's perfect. Again, everybody, have a good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you so much for viewing. Love everybody. Peace out.